Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Film Music House. Uh, I'm Leo. I'm a product manager at Spitfire Audio, and I'm here with Oscar nominated composer and pianist Volker Bertelmann to talk about how he prepares his piano to write music as Hauschka, as an artist, but also as a composer for films such as Lion, uh, Adrift, and also the recent crime drama miniseries Your Honor, uh, which was released earlier this year. Hello. Hi, Leo. How are you how doing? How are you doing? I mean, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I'm also good. Thank you. Good. Fantastic. <laughs> um, so the prepared piano, I think just for the sake of those who might not know what the prepared piano is, could you just describe in a, in a nutshell what that is? Well, I mean, prepared piano is in a way a technique that I think started around 1900, uh, mm -hmm. where it maybe was a little bit of a punk movement. Uh, where you know somebody uh, wanted to maybe explore more sounds than just you know the 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 clear pristine piano sound that was you know that everybody tried who built a piano wanted to try the best uh, and clear piano um, possible and uh, I think around 1900 um i'm not sure exactly who it was but it was before um john cage that there was somebody who actually already i think it was his teacher actually um henry cowell i think was his name so he was the guy that in a way um started to you know to work on sounds with the piano um and with john cage it got of course a little bit more popular um, and what, what ha happens in the preparation is you add on top of the strings or between the, the strings of a piano, you add material um, that resonates with the strings or it damps the strings to an extent where they suddenly sound like a plucked um, guitar or like a bass guitar. Or um, you can try that out very easily by just using your finger and just put it on the strings it's not the best thing for the piano strings because they start to rust. So a lot of times um, when you, for example, when you play a concert, when I played a concert in a big concert hall with a, like a Steinway D grand, uh, people were sometimes a little bit skeptical if my fingers will, you know, destroy the piano. So you have to, of course, afterwards clean them with a cloth and make them dry again and, and wipe everything off. But in general, the finger, in a way, is a, a synonym for something because you want to have both hands free, of course. You try to find material that you can adjust to the strings. And when you try that out, even with your finger, um, you will find, that, find out that every position, every millimeter that you appear from the, from the dampers towards the end of the grand piano, for example, every millimeter changes the sound. You have different overtones, a little bit like the flageolet note on a guitar, but um, because by pressing your finger on the strings, it can be even sounding like a hammer or it can sound like a, you know, like a percussion sound or so you can change that. And by using, for example, wood or other material, you hear that material on top of the node. And that makes it very interesting because you have endless sound opportunities um, you can play with. And it's a, an extremely uh, inspiring experimental box of, of tricks uh, that is always fantastic. And I think it's sometimes reminds you when you hear it, you think of an electronic instrument, but it's nice that you create electronic sounds with an acoustic instrument. I love that. It's, it sounds like you're, by doing it, you're expanding the sonic capabilities of the piano. Um, I yeah. remember you said um, a few years ago when we did the Spitfire library, you mentioned mm -hmm. that when you were preparing the piano, you were trying to make it sound like other instruments. Mm -hmm. um, is that something yeah, that you which... actively try to do when you're preparing the piano? Well, it's actually definitely some one approach. I mean, that's that's also something when I had my first synthesizer, which was a Moog Prodigy uh, in the, you know, when I was 12, the first thing you try is actually, you wanna re replace a flute or you, you think about a string uh, sound or, you know, that's the first thing that I did with a synthesizer. In our days, synthesizer sounds are already so, 
established as an own instrument that uh, in a way you try to recreate a synthesizer sound at some point, you know, um, which was in my time uh, when I was young, um, you know, the big synthesizers were hardly not available for a normal person because they were so expensive. And uh, so in a way I tried to replace a normal instrument with that, with that, uh, with the synth. And I'm doing the same with the piano in a way, but that's maybe a starting point. And then you realize it sounds different, you know, yeah. It's not, you, you can't get it similar. Uh, it's not a sample library. A sample library has the approach to be as close as possible to a real instrument by recording mm. it. You know? mm. So are there like specific things that you use to prepare the piano normally or any kind of like um, things that people have used in the past that you would define as like, uh, like a starting point for preparing a piano? Well, first of all, I think, I know a lot of people who know John Cage, a lot of the first thing that uh, appears in their mind are screws. Uh, screws are a little bit difficult for the uh, for the instrument because they, first of all, they you, you need some screws that are not like bending the strings too much. And of course, the bending creates, of course, a, a different pitch. So if you have an old piano that you anyways use for like tricks and, uh, you know, um, things that you want to try out, um, the, it's, it doesn't really matter. And it's very interesting because you can use screws that are bending the strings and suddenly you have a complete atonal or pitched, weird pitch in the, in the tone and you have, um, you have the overtones and you have a percussion instrument at the same time. And when they are loose a little bit, then they create a rattling on top of that so they get a very interesting sound with a grand piano i'm i'm doing this differently i'm i'm using mostly these um these sticks for example these mm -hmm. are um, mutes that are used for for from piano by, by piano tuners and they have a leather um around their you know their end and they have a, they are split it in the middle so you can actually put them in the in the center of three strings and they damp every string and they add a wooden sound to it so that creates for example a, a really nice percussion sound and and if you want to have the screw sound on top of that i use mostly something like a you know little bowl or something where metal pieces are in and then they are rattling anyways so mm -hmm. you can even use that to put it on the string what is nice about the preparations is you can add on top of the preparations you can use other preparations so it's a, a little bit like a an effect pedal after another effect pedal you know you can create these kind of signal lines in a way and i, I really like like experimenting with that mm. Mm. and i noticed when i was listening to the score for your honor there were loads of kind of percussive elements that were almost like riding the songs through and kind of building that tension. Are there any specific techniques you used in that uh, in that score to to write with on the piano? Yeah, well, I, I used a couple of things that were, um, you know, uh, things that first of all I used a lot of like blocked um, um, sounds that you know where I, I used actually, for example. Um, this, uh, which is an art, it's, it looks a little bit like clay or something, but it's an art eraser. Um, and um, I, I will put that um, here on the string just so you can see a little bit. Um, and I play the sound, actually the, the, the key sounds beforehand like, like this, of course it's a D. And then I put that thing on there. And suddenly it becomes very wooden and the further I go back, the more I get a kind of more like a synth sound. Um, and that's very nice because you have an, a hand free and it's very small and you can actually put ev like everywhere one little piece, wherever you play and which scale you play. So I use that, for example, I use a lot of times um, like gaffer tape. Um, but I not use it on the strings. I use it also taped on the strings, but here I use it on top of the strings. I just take the whole thing and just put it on the string and then that makes it. And then
then it sounds really like a percussion, like a metal percussion mm -hmm. um, piece. And there is, for example, in the episode one, there is a, a scene at the end where um, Michael is cleaning the car from all the accident and from the blood um, that is all all over the car. And uh, because he's stressed out and, you know, people are watching him, uh, the neighbors are in a way thinking, what is he doing? He's very stressed. And in that scene, for example, I had the feeling it needs some tension. And I used, for example, uh, gaffer tape on the strings, but I also used my uh, piano lamp that is on top of the piano, that is a metal, like a very simple metal, old school uh, piano lamp. But when you bang that with a stick, it becomes like a humongous kind of metal, like urgent, dang, 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 you know? And that was really, uh, I really loved it. I just played it because I was experimenting with the sounds. And then I said, oh, why don't I bang on that? On that lamp and uh, so here we go i've recorded it and it was great <laughs> is that doesn't happen to be the song uh who would do a thing like this yeah yeah because i i when i listened to that i i heard that sound and i thought yeah he must be hitting his piano with a hammer right now there yeah, can't be no, no, there can't be any other explanation for this <laughs> yeah it's actually this little stick yeah Banked, banked to a small piano lamp uh, that is, you know, that size. But because it's out of everything is out of metal and the resonance of the piano uh, body, it become it gets bigger and you press the pedal and then you have like you, you hear the the banging through the whole through all the microphones and uh, I love actually when things are you know when when I don't have to move and things are just in my in my neighborhood just the sounds are just clear like just there or over there and i just try something out and it's the same with the with a wooden bridge where the string you know the strings are ending on each piano if you use a percussion um, like a, a stick that has a like a soft end that you use normally for drums um, like a mallet uh, you can and you bang that on this wooden bridge it will be always a bass drum no matter what you know and uh, it, it's really and it sounds really interesting because the pitch changes through the whole piano body and I'm, I'm trying things like that um, out so the, the gaffer tape was one thing that was an accident because I normally use the tape on the strings but then at some day I left actually the the piano, you know, this whole thing in the piano and the blade, and I just said, "Wow, this is like a, this sounds like a snare," you know. So a lot of these things are accidents. I love that. I love that it's like a kind of a, almost like an experimental, accidental phase when you're. I imagine like when you're writing, the music. I, I guess you start from from my interpretation. It feels like maybe you start by experimenting with different sounds and different ways of like putting things on strings and things or do you actually start by writing the song on the piano unprepared and then do you start uh, bringing these things in or is it, is it a different way well i mostly uh, i would say all the melodic stuff i mostly write on uh, on the computer because the melodic stuff has a lot of um First of all, you want to see it straight away to the picture. And then you need, in a way, uh, one of the most important things for me, actually, is when I'm writing cues um, to find the right tempo. And it's sometimes actually the essential, the essential thing. When you play something that is really beautiful, but it's too fast, the notes are coming in a too dense, you know, in a too dense way. And that means like everything gets too stressed. You you when you're watching then a scene, you feel like oh it's too many notes. Uh, it's beautiful, but uh, and you straight away you get the comments. Hey, uh, I I think it's too much. <laughs> can can you take things out? And one thing is of course you take things out and then um, you um, uh, you know you you just reduce the amount of notes but a lot of times it's just the tempo that uh, the chord structure is too quickly changing there's no breath in between um, and so i'm trying those things mostly out on the computer first 
and then I'm going into the piano and I, I, I start writing and then mostly to those melodic cues I start with preparations on top of that but if I'm having a cue that needs more an experimental approach I start a lot of times with the piano and I'm using then the whole like all the miking and you know just the whole piano as a as a sound source but then I have also a stereo pair of DPA mics that are in the piano and they are feeding into a sub mixer that is here on my side and then on that table I have uh, tons of um, little foot pedals and then I'm trying you know to figure out if I want to play like a real acoustic sound or if I want to feed it into a chain of foot pedals and create suddenly a whatever a more like a voice kind of sound or and that helps me also to do sustainable and not sustainable like sustained sounds <laughs> you know um so i'm uh that, that it, it's actually um when i'm doing this i get lost i tell you it's so imagine uh, yeah i lose time i lose time <laughs> <laughs> another thing i really noticed about the score is the the prominent strings across the whole the whole thing just blending in and out of the piano and also what i thought was synths but now from what you've just described is probably from the piano as well um yeah, i was going to ask sometimes. yeah <laughs> maybe i was going to ask how how you go about blending those sounds together and incorporating uh the prepared piano sound with other instruments into other kind of cues and other types of styles of music well, you know, as, as you maybe know, with, you know, working on, uh, you know, working with samples and uh, it's always a matter of level. I mean, you can, uh, let's say I'm using the prepared piano has a very, has a big advantage in being very experimental and it helps you to feel that you find something extraordinary. And that's very helpful for your own feeling towards writing. So when you found something that is extraordinary, you are really happy about it and you, you try to expand it and then maybe it got, gets, gets into other cues. And in a way, what I, I see it more like a library that I'm creating that can be used in that film. But once you present the first, you know, the first rounds of ideas to the director and you know, to everybody who has uh, uh, you know, some, something to say in the process, a lot of times sounds like that disappear again because they are too present you know they they have a very uh, kind of very clear and uh, in your face kind of uh, you, there's hardly you can't concentrate on something else in a way and that is for a scene not always the ideal sound because that covers of course the attention that the director wants for the picture which is in still the the main thing you know the music is in a way helping to you know to describe and sometimes you get a prominent spot but mostly it's more a, a you know helping the the emotions here and there like setting little spots for you know for the storytelling um and uh, so that that means for me that i'm you know i have to blend sometimes let's say a prepared piano percussion sound i'm adding on top of that a softer sound and then i'm trying to balance them out it's a little bit like building an own uh, like an own plugin with different styles in you know in the plugin and i can actually handle that by using the volume um you know and mixing them together and that's the same with the strings i'm, I'm writing the string arrangements with with plugins of course because I, I need to present them before i uh, can buy them but there is also sometimes uh, a way and with your honor we did that in the beginning in the sound search we did um, uh, a very rough recording uh, with an orchestra just as an idea for you know how things can sound we couldn't use them because it was uh, we had to record everything in the us but at least we wanted to try out and see how things are sounding. Um, and uh, I really, uh, you know, I really loved that process in that sense, because uh, a sample is always great, but the samples, um, they sometimes have a little bit of a lack of, um, of room in a way, or of air that is transported. 
um, and with with a real orchestra you have of course more options to blend from one sound into the other because you can tell them you know um, but it's uh, the samples meanwhile are so great and so good that uh, it's uh, you know it's much easier for me to not to use words to describe what I want so I'm, I'm very happy about that so to come back to the piano a little bit um, mm -hmm. are there any kind of other techniques that you have that you can demonstrate now um, yeah I can do that I you know, I'm I'm doing a I'm organizing a piano festival in Düsseldorf, uh, where I'm uh, where I'm based, and uh, since I'm doing this now since um, 2005, so we we have a quite a long tradition, and uh, all you know musicians that I was on labels with, uh, you know, like Max Richter, Johan Johansson, um, you know, Dustin O'Halloran, all these guys came to the festival in in the first edition actually. And then, you know, we had uh, guys like Steve Reich and, you know, like, I would say from a different approach, people, but very, very experimental people. And during that time, I found out, of course, I invited also prepared piano people. And there was a interesting, once you get deeper into it, you, you find out that there's people that are playing the piano inside, um, like the sitter, for example, or they play in the inside with a bow, with a string bow. So you you have 10 people standing around the piano and everyone has a, like a bell choir has three or four notes. And that, but they play like really classical pieces. And uh, it sounds suddenly like a detuned string ensemble in a way, a very interesting. So by, by watching that, um, I, I thought, I, I saw actually one, uh, person, I think it was even Sarah Nichols. I think she played a piece that was written for plucked piano as a string, as a as a sitter in a way. And I, I will demonstrate you that because that is one technique, for example, that I used on a cue in episode two called Missions, and it's uh, it actually works mainly with these. Uh, you can play that you, you need when you play that with more fingers you can play of course arrangements and chords i'm not so good in that but um at least the sound of it is it has a lot of resonance and it is beautiful um, you know it can work like a harp um, and at the same time um, you know you you just have it in, in front of your fingers you don't have to ask a harpist to come by so that was one, for example. Then um, another one is actually, um, I'm using a lot of times these um, these tea candle um, you know, packagings out of aluminium. And the good thing about that is that they are not magnetic because on when I'm playing live, I have uh, some help and steel pickups in the piano and they are magnetic. And so everything that is iron would stick to the strings and you couldn't move it. So I, I, I looked into like aluminium materials that I could use. And what I'm using inside of the aluminium thing is a marble. So when you put when you put that in there, then the marble jumps inside of the on of that um, you know packaging and that sounds like and you can hear actually the marble creates you know a jumping is jumping like that so you hear kind of and then the of course the material of the aluminium creates as well a rhythm and when you tape that with gaffer tape to the string but it's loose then you achieve that you can always have that sound on that string and it doesn't disappear so it's mostly also a question of how can i adjust a certain sound element on a certain string. That sound really reminds me of um, when we when we released your library at Spitfire. Mm -hmm. We had a demonstration for all of the employees to describe what the prepared piano was, and I had happened yeah. to that had just moved um, a baby grand that I had inherited, 
Uh, mm -hmm. I'm a classically trained pianist, so for me, like mm -hmm. this is this is my baby, literally. And we stuck it in there, and we decided, well, why don't we put some uh, ping pong balls in there? Mm -hmm. Which initially scared me, but then yeah. seeing all the ping pong balls roll into there, and then hearing how it sounded, yeah, it's, it, it's something I've never really because a piano has always been an instrument. I feel like you don't explore different sounds with it. That no. when you when you start playing the piano, so to hear it do something else is incredibly exciting, and then to have ping pong balls flying out as well, that's pretty exciting too. Yeah, it's actually very funny, and it's it has a lot of it gives you a lot of times the you know fun back to explore sounds and I, I would say you know and that's not only for preparations I think when you want to find something new you have to uh, go in an area where maybe people think well, what is he doing I mean is that uh, that's music <laughs> or something like that you know but you have to go in an area where you people can discover and yourself you can discover things that might be, you know, refreshing. It's a little bit like when I did my first um, homepage and I remember there was, a, you know, the technology was not that far developed for homepages. I did my first uh, homepage just with a ball pen. So I just, I, I was dry, I was writing all the buttons and I was scanning all the buttons. I, I, I was drawing every little thing of that homepage on a, on a big paper. I was scanning it, I was cutting it out, and then it looked like a hand-drawn uh, <laughs> homepage. And what was interesting is that a lot of people just wrote me back and they said, I don't know, how can you do actually, how can you write with a ball pen on the screen or something like that? And I said, no, it's actually only, um, I'm using actually an analog technique. Um, you know, and I'm just transferring it into a, a, a digital form. And a lot of times that was already something that a lot of people, because of the, the Im immense amount of possibilities, they get lost in the, into the, in the digital world. But when you go back and you just, you know, you do things by hand and then you transform it into the digital world, then suddenly these things uh, are getting a, a warmth and a, a heart and uh, you know uh, like as well as people who are doing cover design just putting the cover for a few weeks in the rain and then they scan that after it was lying for two weeks in their garden and then when you when you scan it it suddenly looks amazing it's just like oh man this is like it looks like something transformed <laughs> I feel like that sentiment kind of nicely wraps up how a prepared piano is from in that kind of same perspective of having like an analog instrument and expanding mm -hmm. its capabilities to, 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 you know, limitless sounds really. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I thought maybe not to, not to throw you on, on the spot, but to end this, this conversation, maybe you might want to play something with some prepared piano techniques that you have not to put you um, on the spot or anything. <laughs> well, I can, uh, because the camera is just showing the inside of the piano, I can, uh, I can put a, a few, um, a few things in here and I can just play with it a last, just a, a little piece and then, you know, yeah, I will, I will try. I'm actually only, and that's very interesting about that is that the, the limitation of um, of things are in a way sometimes very helpful because when you let's say also for writing when you say I only have a few notes that I want to use it sometimes you know it gives you direction and it's much it gives you much more clarity in what you are doing and um, let's say here I have now um, a few keys that I want to use uh, so I hope um, the limitation helps. <laughs> Like... Okay. Uh... So I, I I used in a way every uh, every spot that I could repair. <laughs> Thank you.
just a little re repetitive uh, element where you can, when you see the the preparations jumping, you can, in a way, a little bit imagine how the sounds come comes out of it. Well, what a great way to wrap up this conversation. Thank you so much. You're um, welcome. And thanks for for the chat, and thanks everyone for joining in. Um, I think we'll end it there. Yeah. Thanks, Leo. See you later. Bye-bye.